What exactly is cultural Marxism, the dominant culture of today? How did the founders of communism figure out a way to take over our country, not with guns and weapons, but with values and ideas? Let's take a closer look at this and see exactly how it happened. There was a man named Karl Marx. Marx got an idea. His idea was that the workers of the world should unite and rise up to counter an evil foe. That foe being capitalism. Capitalism, the idea that people and private companies should be able to own the means of production and be free to earn and have as much as they wished was anathema to Marx. Marx felt the state should own the means of production as well as products produced and then the state should distribute a fair share of all such products to each and every worker. Thus, in his book, The Communist Manifesto, Karl Marx thundered, Workers of the World Unite! Sure that he had a principle to unify all workers in every country, Marx looked forward to eventually taking over the world. Karl Marx believed that you would have uh, a rebellion by the workers uh, against uh, the capitalist system, which would then create uh, a Marxist uh, communist society where you would have dictatorship of the proletariat. Unfortunately, when World War I broke out, the workers of the world did not unite. In fact, the workers united with their respective countries and fought each other. What happened was the Marxists had an enormous disillusionment when the French and the Germans and the British workers all rose up for the fatherland and went to war happily fighting one another. Marx's idea was a total failure. Workers were more loyal to their respective countries, churches, and cultural values than they were to their counterparts in other countries. Some years after Marx failed, several of his disciples got a new idea on how to take over the world. One of his disciples, Antonio Gramsci, while, where else but in prison, wrote up a series of plans, now known as the prison notebooks. In this plan, Gramsci announced, the workers of the world will unite only after the long march is over. The long march? In other words, they had to get into the culture and change the way of people's thinking. And if people were thinking about patriotism and nation and God and country, that was a mechanism which was too resistant to Marxism. It could never take hold. So you had to erode and destroy that in the individuals. That began what's called the long march through the institutions, through the seminaries, through the churches, through the media, through Hollywood, and all the rest of it, and the vast majority of the people, so they would embrace the ideas of Marxism, and they would embrace the ideas that they had rejected, and they would be open to a takeover, basically, by Marxists. Now, not political Marxists, but cultural Marxists. So to get to that point, they said, we have to destroy the culture. If you can break people away from religious affinities, for example, if they have an affinity to their religion, they might say, well, we're not going to go along with government because it's contrary to my religion. So cultural Marxism would attack religion of all kinds. doesn't make any difference because there was another place where people could go other than to the government for support and for answers. We the people will have thus been indoctrinated.